it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts, independent stamping up demonstrator in the UK. Um, if this is the first time you have joined my channel, welcome. If you are returning, absolutely welcome. Do remember, if you would like to see more videos, then there's a subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. You can click on that pretty much the whole way through my video so that you will then see when you go to YouTube that I've posted a new video. Today's project is this one. It's a bridge card <clears throat> and I'm going to make a, a variation on this today. I'm using the um, Sailing Home Suite, which isn't called Sailing Home. It's called, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's called Come Sail Away. That's right. Come Sail Away. Um, you can get a bundle with the stamps and the smooth sailing dies. Um, the dies are are cutting out some of the images, are cutting out, cut out some of the images, but there are extras as well. So we've got uh, the anchor cuts out, um, that's the small boat, the large boat, the lighthouse. This is a lovely label, um, another label here. This is rope and a knot, and then a wheel. And then we've got two tiny little dies that make the pointer for a compass, and that's what I've used for this. So, oh, and this lovely um, kind of seaweed effect. So it's a really lovely set. Don't just think men. Don't just think it's got to involve sailboats, because this is great for all sorts of things. And obviously rope is fantastic for everything. And um, labels, always useful. So I'm using the matching designer series paper which is the Come Sail, it, Come Sail Away paper. It's fantastic, particularly for cards for men, but there are some generic um, prints as well. So this one, for example, which is a balmy blue stripe. The colours, always on the back of the packet, balmy blue, basic black, moss, mossy meadow, knight of navy, soft suede, and whisper white. I'm also um, pushing in Sahara sand, because the matching baker's twine has Sahara sand in it. So I'm pushing into that, which is why I've got um, Sahara sand card here. So I said, I'm gonna make a, a variation of this. The only variation is I'm not going to color it. It's going to be monochrome and it's going to be in Sahara sand. Now the joy with this card is that although it's brilliantly dimensional, it folds flat and will then fit into one of our standard C6 envelopes. This is sized, sorry American and North, North American viewers, this is sized for Imperial uh, A4. Uh, I haven't, but I will see if I can, calculated um, a letter size. I'll try and sort it out, but I'm not holding, you, holding any promises on that one because it is quite a different um, card base um, and a different envelope. But you can see we've got lovely dimension um, and it's all done with little bits of card. So let's get started. I'm going to start by constructing the card base. Uh, for this I recommend that you have either a metric scoreboard or a trimmer that will score as well as um, cut. I'm using the now retired Stamping Up trimmer, but I know there are others available. Your basic card, and don't worry too much about this because all the dimensions will be on my website and that's linked immediately below and it's this post. So you just click on that link and you'll get all the information about this post. Um, so this is 22 and a half centimetres by 10 and a half centimetres. You could do two at once if you kept your piece of cardstock A4, because basically what you're doing is using the full width and cutting it short. So, get rid of our cutting blade and the first thing we are going to do is score at three and a half, then seven. Now there is an argument for turning the card over at this point, but I'm not going to worry. Fifteen and a half, I'll come back to why in a minute. Fifteen and a half and nineteen. So basically you're doing three and a half and seven from each end um, and it's as simple as that. Now the piece that I cut off the length, so this piece, 
uh, I'm going to use for the bridges in the middle. The gap in the middle is, mm, I want to say 10 and a half centimetres, but let me just measure it, is, oh no it's not, what am I talking about, it's eight and a half. It's a slightly shy, by which I mean it's not quite that big, eight and a half, and this is ten and a half, that's where I got my ten and a half from. So you want to score using the width, so the ten and a half width, you want to score at one centimetre and slightly over one centimetre at your two ends. It's not a vital slightly over one centimetre, but it just seems to sit flatter. You are also going to need a strip of cardstock, which I've cut, I've stuck some of the ribbon, uh, sorry, the rope um, designer series paper on, and then just stuck it on and then fussy cut. I'm not going to put you through the agony of the fussy cutting, because I think watching me fussy cut that is, there's probably more things you can do with your day. Um, so this is where I say, in an ideal world, I would do these the other way up, so these two inner ones, because I'm one of those people that likes to fold towards a mountain, not a valley. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's a little um, awkward to do it this way, but not too bad. I'm just keeping my eyes peeled because somewhere in this craft room is a wasp. Um, I am somewhat allergic to wasps, so I am going to just... Be careful um, about that. Um, so, I found him. It's all right. I found him. I've let him out. He is no longer a bother. Right. Um, I've also cut, can I find them? Yes, I can. Some designer series paper. Um, and yes, I have been sad enough to mark the back because I want them to actually run properly. So we've got um, that one, that one, and that one. So these are cut at eight by 10 centimeters, three by 10, three by 10. I cut a piece that was 10 centimeters deep and then just cut them in a row, which is why the designer series paper actually runs straight across. For this one, I used the paper that's got the lighthouses for the two fronts and then the boats for the back because that's the whole point of this is that it, you're looking at um, boats through your through the front of your card. But for this one, as I say, I'm just going to go for monotone and I'm going to stick these on with snail. You could use liquid adhesive if you want, um, but for me, this is paper. There's no real pressure being put on them. So snail is absolutely perfect. Now, do remember that while we have new bundles in the catalogue, um, bundles only actually run for the for the life of a catalogue. So for the annual catalogue, they run for the whole year. Uh, but we've got the autumn, winter, um, or some people call it the holiday catalogue, coming out in September. And any bundles in that will only last through until the beginning of January. Um, even if they carry over, they won't be a bundle price. So do bear that in mind. And on the subject of the autumn winter catalogue, do remember that um, if you want to order from it early, uh, it goes live on the 4th of September. If you want to order from it early, you can do that by joining my team um, and you can put autumn winter catalogue items into your starter kit. So there is that option. If that is something you want to take advantage of do let me know and I can let you know how you do that because it's slightly different okay so our bridge is the next thing we want to add on um, and our bridge needs to be the width of this this and this without opening it up so it's the easiest way to calculate it is to fold it flat so you've got this open and this closed then grab your ruler and measure, and it's just about 15 and a half centimetres, just about. So this is longer than 15 and a half centimetres, and I've done it deliberately longer so that I can have 
a knot at or a bit of a knot at both ends. So what I need to do is actually pop it on upside down and just with a pencil mark where I'm going to cut it but I'm marking slightly inside that because that's basically where I'm going to put the glue and then I want the same idea slightly inside on that fold line. So the, these areas are where I'm going to put the glue which I have. Oh yes, I buried it under a stamp set. So just this I would use liquid adhesive because this is basically what's keeping your bridge card a bridge card. Uh, this is now back in stock. Hopefully at the point when you see this, this is back in stock uh, in Europe. We had a problem getting it through customs in Germany. Nothing to do with Brexit just to do with the German customs changing some of their rules. Um, right, so I'm turning this upside down just so that I can see my marks. And I want it to be inside, as in not coming underneath the card. And as you can see, there's no, you can't see it from the back, which means it's perfect on the front. Then just snip your ends off, if you can disentangle your snips, snip your ends off and I always do this from the back because then you get a nice straight cut. It's much easier doing it from the back than the front. Those two bits we don't need and that is our bridge card. Now because of the vagaries of folds you may find that you need to kind of reinforce where some of these folds are but there we go. Now this I'm going to cut, of course I should have done it when I had my trimmer out, I'm going to cut one and a half centimetre strips which I will then use, whoops that's a scoring blade, uh, I will then use once I have got my stamped images sorted out. So you do end up with slightly more of this than you actually need, but it's a great way to use up the piece that you've cut away. OK, so stamped images. Let's grab a piece of Whisper White. Um, I am doing Boats in Navy, A Night of Navy and everything else in Sahara Sand. I will need this to stamp off on. So... Boats, Knight of Navy, the boats at the front, and they are boats, they're not ships, they are small so they're boats. Um, you can get a boat in a ship but you can't get a ship in a boat or something like that. Um, so I'm going to stamp this one full strength and this one I'm going to stamp twice but I'm going to stamp off once and then stamp once. I think I've got another wasp in here. This is the problem of crafting with your windows open. And twice. And that's just to give some sort of feeling of depth. Of course, I'm now concentrating on the wasp and not this. Uh, the Lighthouse, I am going to stamp in smoky, not smoky slate, Sahara Sand. And again, I'm going to try and fill in spaces. And the last stamp that I need is the Compass, which again I'm doing in Sahara Sand. Now there isn't actually a punch, sorry, a die for that. Uh, what I have found is that you can use your layering circle dies um, or if you've got it, the retired one and three eighth inch circle punch is just slightly smaller, but it's it's good enough and it's quick. Um, the one and a half is too big, but the one and three eighths, you get a tiny little bit around the edge. So if you've still got that, then that would be a perfect thing to use, otherwise use one of your layering circle dies. Um, so I've told you already we've got um, dies for the large boat, the small boat and the lighthouse. 
I also need this and the two um, pointers. But by the magic of YouTube, in true Blue Peter fashion, here are some I have prepared earlier. Now, I've, I've die cut this, but I haven't poked out the final piece. There is, this actually comes out, so you get a really nice die. Um, I've cut the larger of the two pointers in Knight of Navy, and it's literally a scrap. The smaller one in Sahara Sand, the label in Sahara Sand, etc. So, putting it all together, uh, first thing I need is to fold my the ends of my bits of Sahara Sand. Now, some of these I'm going to put one way around, and some I'm going to put another way around. Well, sorry about that. The battery ran out. It was fine at the beginning of my recording, and never mind. OK, so we were just folding these. Now, it's always worth checking that they are going to be about the right size. I don't mind a little bit of bowing. That's possibly a bit too much. So what I would then do is just cheat them a little. And as I say, this is the vagaries of scoring, because the um, when you score, you can't get an exact measurement. Um, or exact enough for things like this, so you can just cheat them a tiny weeny bit just by kind of pushing them in and then hopefully that will be a better fit mm, a bit better okay so let's just make sure I sort out the others as well so that one's definitely cheated As is that one. Okay, so the, the most faded boat is going to go at the back and that one's going to go with the legs sticking up towards me. Um, all I'm going to do is run a tiny bit of liquid adhesive along the very bottom edge of my boat and then pop it towards the right hand end of my piece of card. Then this one's going to go with the legs going down and is going to be towards the left hand end. So again, we just need a little bit of liquid adhesive on there. And then the larger one, again, with the legs pointing down we're going to pop in the middle. So hopefully it will look as if the other two boats are in the background. Well, I mean, they are in the background, but it will look as if they are behind this. Oh, I don't know why I'm putting that away, because I still need it. Right, so I work from the back forwards, because otherwise you're trying to fiddle in tiny spaces. So a small amount of liquid adhesive and I really do mean you only need a small amount on both ends. And then you want to pop it in so that it's kind of at the bottom and slightly away from the back. So you want it almost at the bottom. And then the easiest way to get it in the right position is to make sure that's square, always a plan, and then just fold your card and it will automatically pick up the other side in the right place, which is always good to know. Right, so our next one, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but our legs, if you remember, are going backwards. So small amount of liquid adhesive on each end. And this one, we're going to use the full depth of the legs and I'm going to pop it inside the one that we've already stuck down. So again, we can get that one in its right place, straight. Hold that one down while we press the card flat, which means the other one will automatically be in the right place. And then same with this last one. And again, we're going legs down. 
and a small amount of liquid adhesive and again we'll come in line up our ends fold flat one way just making sure that everything stays in position you can see from underneath quite helpfully and then the other way and there we are so that's our boats in position hopefully you can see that through the top and then all we've got to do now is stick our lamp uh, lighthouse on remember this needs to come inside the card because our envelope this fits in the envelope but only just so we'll pop that down then for this we need first of all we need to adhere this and I'm doing it with the north at the top and the south at the bottom or actually at the moment exactly the opposite way around but I'm doing it so that it's going that way rather than that way then we need to layer these up and if I just grab my piercing mat and I always use the back for things like this and a corner we can layer everything up oops in fact let me just stick this on first I can quite like getting things done in the right order is there the smallest amount of adhesive on this so pop that on there pop that on there grab your take a pick and pierce through all layers whoops throw your bone folder on the floor and then I'm going to take one of the metallic brads which are in the catalogue and I'm going to take one of the copper ones or should I take it actually no I'll take a silver in fact I might even take that silver don't ask me why it's just because really pop it on there pop this on here keep it all together with your the back of your um, brad that's the word I'm looking for then just very gently with your bone folder press down that helps keep everything flat and then making sure you've got north to the north adhesive down the middle and pop this on now it just fits inside the designer series paper i say inside it lines up with the designer series paper like that so this is the just stamp it version this is the stamp it and color it in version i use sahara sand for everything on this um, for all the stamping and then just picked out blends to um to color the the individual pieces uh, but I thought I would try a monochrome version as well. So, as I say, it does fit in a standard envelope, just like that. But you do need to be very careful about this end and this end, otherwise it could be a little bit too tight. So, there we go. Two really nice, perfect cards for men. Now, to write on the back, you'd need to put a piece of cardstock and that would be the same size as your designer series paper. So it's eight by 10 centimeters. Um, so that will give you somewhere to write and you can obviously stamp a happy birthday or whatever it is. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Sorry about the break in the middle. I would like to say how long this video is, but I have no idea now. Too long probably. Um, however, thank you very much for watching. As I said earlier, if you would like to subscribe, it's sort of there. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment if you've got any questions. Um, 
if there's anything in particular you would like me to do a video on, I'm very happy to take requests. It means I don't have to just think of everything myself. Um, so it would be a great help if anyone had any requests. So that's it for me. Do just remember that if you're in the UK, you can shop with me from the link below or on my website. If you're in the UK, France, Austria, Germany or the Netherlands, you can join my team and take advantage of the fantastic joining offer that we've got on at the moment. It's amazing. Details of that over on my website. So do have a look at that. Thank you very much indeed. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon.